Hey y'all, welcome to Geek Freaks. I am Frank, and today I'm joined once again by Lori Cal uh, Calcaterra. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me back on. I love this show. I have a blast. I watch you on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's where I see you the most too. Actually, is TikTok. Yeah. Uh, man, this is such a good story. We're talking Path of the Pill Rider. Uh, can you remind people what's going on with this world? Yeah. So in Path of the Pill Rider, death is broken. Your body can die, but your soul does not leave or transition. Um, you're stuck there as you decay and your brain rots in your skull. You lose time. You are forgetful, violent, detached, um, chaotic, and dangerous, right? And again, it's not just people. It's animals, insects, yeah. fish. Nothing dies correctly anymore. Um, so when we start this story, we're 10 years into that kind of apocalypse and things have devolved back to the Wild West and we're following a cowboy named Jude Sinclair, who is like the last guy still looking for the answer of why do the dead no longer die? Yeah. And we're also kind of taking a look back at how it all started too with issue three. And now yes. we're going into issue four, which is going to be wrapping up that story. And yes. how do you how do you do that? How do you manage that transition of telling the story back without losing anybody who might be in on the current story? What do you, How are you doing that? Um, you mean telling a story non-sequentially? Yeah, like, like how do you plan yeah. that out? That seems so difficult to me. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to show people the terrible apocalypse first. I wanted people to see the big Jameses and how yeah. how people treat each other and how dangerous everything is, no matter if you're in the wild or in a town or it's population, no po it's dangerous, right? That's the whole idea of one and two is to introduce you to the world as it is now. But then it's such an interesting apocalypse and it's so specific about how it works. We needed to show that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had to have that flashback where Jude was like, do you remember when the first day and the first time you saw it happen? And we go back to that. But it's great because it feels there's so much exposition in number three where it's like, this is the day it started and how quickly yeah. things just break down between government um it's it's political it's you know ethics issues there's famine there's water issues there's just so many things happening at the same time um we as the people are not prepared for that level of just destruction and chaos and and we make bad choices and ultimately things burn down so yeah we pick up in number four where we left off at number three um if you <laughs> if you follow my reading i always leave that last page and i get you with it right yeah, <laughs> yeah. gotcha and everybody's always mad at me like dang it Lori. Mm -hmm. um but that once you know you want to come back and find out what happens next so we're dealing with that um number four kind of wraps up like the first part of the story if it's like mm -hmm. if it was a movie it'd be like first act right, right. and right. then um there's four issues in the middle and then there's another four issues to wrap up that first arc and um things burn down frank we yeah. burn them down it's the end of an era kind of thing the roman empire is gone um and time starts over it's the new normal the new future um that jude st Clair has kind of, he's kind of showed you in the first two episodes yeah. um we pick up and you'll see why he is the way he is that trauma that happens um is With, really really massive yeah Without spoilers, what do you think it is about Jude that makes him so able in this new world? Well, he's he's just so damn determined. Yeah, he um, seems to have a goal when everybody else gives up, you know? Yeah, and if you think, I mean, you we've kind of showed it a little bit each issue where he's very determined to the point where he puts himself at risk to get the answer. Um, and he doesn't always make good decisions, so it sucks to be Jude St. Clair. But it, he picks him up. He picks himself up by the bootstraps. He finds his hat like Indiana Jones, puts mm -hmm. it on, and keeps going. Um, because in his mind, no one else is looking for the answer, and if he doesn't do it, nobody else will. Um, so I think it's his determination that really sets him apart. But he does have some skills. He can fight. He's kind of a scrapper. Um, he's obviously survived a few things um, yeah. in his days. That he's still around. And uh, we're going to throw a whole lot more at poor Jude St. Clair and see what he does. If he could survive Big James, he could survive anything, really. <laughs> he got <laughs> lucky, didn't he? Like, yeah. he passed out. If he hadn't have passed out, he'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think, you know, is he looking to, right? Is he looking to <laughs> restore humanity or just try to find 
some sort of hope for a better future. I think he's trying to do both. Like he, he really wants to know the why. And then if he can figure that out, can he put it right? Can he, can he stop it? Um, there is some, there's other things that's going on with Jude where he um, is so determined. Um, he does not want to be, he doesn't want to go through it. You know, he can see, he has seen it time and time again, how people deteriorate and how terrible it is and the toll that it takes. And he just, he's afraid. So yeah, um, yeah that's part of an, another part of his motivation is like, he needs to solve it so that he doesn't have to deal with it as well. Yeah. That kind of determination in this world, it's hard to trust other people. What kind of person yeah. attaches themselves to such an adventure? Like it's how does Jude? he, well, yeah, who's going to attach themselves to Jude? There's only like one crazy person I could think of, but is there anybody in particular? <laughs> like, like, why uh, do you think he's, he can, uh, what kind of team is going to join him is what I'm saying, basically. Um, he does create a team at some point. Um, you're going to see Jude make some connections, but Jude is kind of a loner. So okay. any kind of um, team up he has is usually temporary I because see. this world is so difficult. It's hard to make attachment um, because, you know, they could die really of anything. You could die of dysentery. You could get mauled by a bear, whatever. <laughs> Dwayne's gonna stick around, right? You don't break my heart now. I need. I need I'm not gonna break to your be... heart. Dwayne is around for a long time. Okay, good. But they may <laughs> not always be on the same path. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I see. Dwayne um, is kind may... of like the bard following the Witcher kind of guy. You know, like yeah, he's just hanging exactly. Out. <laughs> he's always exactly. Got the tab. <laughs> I, Dwayne is kind of like the guy that is in the apocalypse is probably the best suited to survive the apocalypse because he just doesn't care. Yeah. Um, you could be alive. You can be undead. He doesn't care. If you give him a beer, we're friends. Um, <laughs> and he just kind of like walks through the world. Like it's not on fire. It's so refreshing and comedic at times. Um, Dwayne Fink is a breath of fresh air in this world, but um, he kind of, <laughs> It's also dangerous to be around Dwayne. <laughs> For sure. Always seems to get into trouble. <laughs> I wonder what he would do if he ran into Big James. <laughs> You'd be yeah. like, oh, look, a fuzzy bear. Like, <laughs> we should run, Dwayne. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a good point. Good point. Yeah, that's yeah. we should do that. We're going to see Dwayne in some mortal peril in uh, issue number five. So. <laughs> okay. Oh, man, I can't wait. Yeah. Mortal so peril. <laughs> we have issue four here, and that's going to be wrapping up the first trade. Is that correct? Yes, yes, that is correct. So uh, one, two, three, and four. Um, and this is what I love about producing them as a floppy is people get to read them as, you know, as we go with the intention that we are creating um, a trade paperback, three of them for the first arc with yeah. four issues each. And then that would be great to do an omnibus. Oh, good Lord. Oh, God, that'd you be so imagine? cool. Yeah. Oh, someday. Hashtag goals. Um, hashtag but yeah, goals so sure. <laughs> you're going to see <laughs> all four. Um, and the cool part is now, if anybody's been following along Path of the Pale Rider, we produced issue number one in black and white. Um, we were new to indie and we had kickstarted the first time and um, that's all we could afford. Um, the story is great in black and white. People love the black and white series. But when we got to number two and we showed what the world looked like in color, everybody agreed it was far superior. Mm -hmm. um, so the trade paperback will be the first time we premiere issue number one in color. Matt Chambers, our current colorist, is is actually coloring issue. I got pages today. So um, I'm very excited to see that issue um, really come to life and, and match the others. And then the trade paperback is just going to be a joy to have. I'm so excited. That's so cool because for people who have been sticking with this journey the whole time, I mean, of course, I myself, I'm going to buy that trade. I already know that for sure. But it's neat that I'm also going to be able to revisit the old ones and see it in a new light. Like, that's such a cool feature. Yeah. I love that. And we I always had the intent of going back to color. Yeah. But it's like now it's actually happening. And it's just, um, uh, what do I want to say? It's like check off the bucket list. You feel yeah. fulfilled that you're actually well, yeah. at that point. Like, look how far we've come where we can go back, you know, and when we, when we first did the issue, we were so excited just to get it out. You know what I mean? In black and white, we were so excited. Now we're like, Oh, we can do it in color. Like, let's yeah. do it. 
it's crazy, honestly, Lori, that this is your first comic book because that first issue, the story, and of course the art that we're seeing from, from Marco and stuff yeah. was so spot on that it was like, that you, it felt like you've been in this business for a while. It was oh, really good. Thank you so yeah. much. And um, what I really love about that is I'm going to keep going. <laughs> oh yeah. Big I keep developing and keep learning. And every year that we're in indie, we, we, um, we do better. We, we learn new skills and um yeah, it's going to continue. Now, again, the script has already been written. I wrote it in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not changing it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be what it is. Um, mm -hmm. But the cool part is, is that we get to now produce it and enjoy. And every issue just keeps getting crazier. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing Marco DeFillo tackle some of the things I built into this story. Yeah. Sorry, Marco. <laughs> Outside of being, you know, a writer, now you're actually a marketer. You're you're really running an entire company now. What are some yes. of the challenges you didn't expect when you started this adventure? The amount of time it takes to do this. This is a full time job. I actually left my job um, a couple of years ago, and I do this full time. And it takes me every day. And it's amazing because, like, you could work for somebody for forty hours a week, or you could work for yourself for eighty. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, oh, yeah. so, I mean, the amount of hats that I have to wear is kind of what surprised me where it's like, okay, so I'm managing artists. I have to write contracts. Um, there's the whole marketing aspect, you know, how do you market? What's the best way to market? And then once you figure out what works for your audience to continually do that, especially while you're campaigning, um, I tend to be on, I don't know, 30 plus podcasts that are not my own. Mm -hmm. Um, while I'm campaigning. And then in addition to that, I make trips to local comic book stores and I table for the day. And then in addition to that, I do comic cons while we're uh, kickstarting as well. So I'm super busy. And um, thank God my family is supportive because I don't see them yes. too much. That is cool. <laughs> I'm like, we got an hour. Come see mom. <laughs> you also have the side gig as Ellie Brock, the undead reporter. <laughs> so let's not forget that too. Oh my Lord. I had so much fun. I was like, what if one of the dead came and joined me for my Kickstarter video? <laughs> but, but really where it started with is um, we as creators are always encouraged to make a Kickstarter video, yeah. but then people don't watch them. They're like, oh, this is great. They watch for about three seconds and they click off. You can mm -hmm. tell how many people are watching your video until the end. Yeah. And I was like, what can I do? to grab people's attention in the first couple seconds. I know I'll run myself over with a car. Yeah. So that's what I did. <laughs> and like, usually Kickstarter videos are like, hi, I'm Lori Calcaterra. I'm the writer creator. Here's what path of the, here's where we are. Here's what's new. Here's the art team. Right. And I was like, what if I had like comedic relief? What if I had like one of the undead who was just so chaotic and was interrupting and saying crazy things and like, her eye pops out at some point, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, um, I learned a ton making that video about green screening and like mm -hmm. visual effects. Cause I hadn't done a side by side before. So, um, next time I do it, it'll be even better. But, um, yeah, if you're watching this and, um, you want to see the craziest welcome video on Kickstarter, for sure. go watch my welcome video. <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely linking to it all, so they'll they'll be able to watch it for sure. But yeah, I mean, I was and pretty. I was like, blooper reel. Did you watch the blooper reel? Now that you posted on TikTok, I think, right? Yeah, I did. Okay, but they yeah, took I the sound off of it. They were like, "Sound is what? too long," and yeah, that's why I was like, "There's all sorts of comments from me being upset because the um the sound the jingle in the background is from Final Cut Studio. It's not like I used any of their music, yeah. and they copyright strike. They did a copyright strike because it the time, I guess is what it was. So oh, I can't God. fix it. Um, cause it's, but it's like a minute and 27 seconds. So I don't understand why it violates anything. I don't know. Sure, it sure. triggered something. So you can't hear any of the, the, the witty stuff going on. Yeah. You can see me fall down a couple of times. I, think. <laughs> I put like circus music in the background. <laughs> yeah. As long so as it funny. shows you get hit by that car, that was such an attention grabber in the beginning of the video. I was like, hey, what's going on now? <laughs> You're like, who, what? Oh, all yeah. right. Yeah, I'll pay attention. <laughs> and then it's oh, me man. joined by me and you're like, what yeah. is going on? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the entire energy of, of everything you're making, Lori, is this idea that like, 
hey, you know what? Let's try it out. What the hell? That's, you know, and, and it's so fun. fun to be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm having fun doing this. And that's the whole draw of Path of the Pale Rider. It's a comic book. We do riddles on the back cover, which yeah. take you to places in the real world. Um, that last issue, I did a QR scavenger hunt, QR code scavenger hunt. Yeah. It was hila it's hilarious. There's um there's trailers for movies that like influence Path of the Pale Rider, like Tombstone, Quick and the Dead, um, Good, Bad and the Ugly. Um, good there's <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a ton of good movies on there. Then there's zombie yeah. stuff like Night of the Living Dead, Train to Busan. Um, then there's just like there's action movies. Um what's the one Stephen Chow movie? Where that's Kung Kung Fury, Kung Fury. I want to say. I just saw them too. There's Book of Eli, which is really good. Book of Eli is in there. Cocaine I have Bear. Equilibrium in there. Yeah. Um. There's anime, so there's Akira. There's Attack on Titan. Um. Oh, I'm just finishing that one up. <laughs> Attack oh, on Titan. Such a good. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. The finale is um, going to be like next month, so I'm really happy. I know. <laughs> it's like I need to go back and rewatch last season because yeah. we were all so mad when it was like. Here's Aaron coming into the phone. What is going? And then they just ended it. And we we're like, you, your last yeah. episode was a flashback. I need them to redeem Aaron so bad because boy, that character is killing me right now. But yeah. it's Mikasa's <laughs> fault. It's Mikasa's fault, man. He gave her an out where he was like, you know, tell. It was like that moment where she had the the chance to tell him that she loves him and how she feels about him and that he's I worth know. something, and <sighs> she didn't. And now he's just going ham. So. <laughs> <sighs> so the, yeah that last part's got a lot of answering to do because i'm right so, oh, and i was, was like good lord <laughs> so anyway um, that's in there there's also yeah. like um the swedish chef making hot sauce i think i have a he-man singing away um there's rick there's a rick roll there's there's funny stuff in there too but yeah. one of them frank is another short film from yours truly Ooh, and it's hey, only what? like i think it's like maybe a minute a minute and a half Mm -hmm. But it's bonus material from the world of Path of the Pale Rider. And again, it just enriches the story. Yeah. And it's like you're in the world and you just discovered a hidden video from oh, nice. sources unknown. Okay. You know what I mean? And what does yeah. it show you? You know what I mean? And it's yeah. hidden on YouTube so no one can search yeah. it. It's not like if you look Don't at my YouTube it videos, it wasn't. it's not there. You yeah. have to scan the QR code to find it. Yeah. Um. So it's fun. And then and after that, always... we do the short films, right? Right. And there's always the catch up, by the way. I just want to make sure people understand like, oh, I, I wish I was a part of, you know, three or whatever. There's the catch up tier every time you guys can catch up on all of it. It's so worth doing. So make sure you do that. Yes. And I want to, I forgot to tell you this, the, we're building a poker deck, right? Uh, yeah, I saw um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, I love cards. I collect yeah. real fancy decks of cards. So this is just like, it's totally me, right? Um, but we are building a Path of the Pale Rider deck of cards. Mm -hmm. And every 50 backers, um, we release a new card. So yeah. if anybody missed the card we got last time, because again, I came up with it like halfway through the campaign. So we only released one. Um, but the King of Hearts is in the add-ons. Yeah. So okay. if you're ever behind on the poker cards, I will always have them available to add on. Um, just so who wants a 42 card deck? Because- you missed, you know what I mean? You're right, exactly. No, yeah. no. Um, so you can always get those. You can get like metal covers from previous issues. You can get all the cool swag in the add-ons. Yeah. The choose your own adventure is always there. That one's a that one's fun too. Yeah. The deck of cards is perfect because I use a deck of cards as my bookmarks. So oh, that's do perfect you? for me. Yeah. So I'm like, boom, that'll be my that'll be my path uh, bookmarks right there. <laughs> from there the, you go. Great, <laughs> Wait till we get to the Dwayne Fink ones. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I gotta have that Jude Saint Clair. I don't have that one yet, so I'll be grabbing that for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, you need that one because that's the that's like the inaugural one, right? That was the yeah, first that's one. The king. Um, All right, so we have metal covers this round, and you were saying that you only have a few left of those ones, correct? Right. So you can get them on this campaign. Um, Last one. That's as what an, was. Yeah. So we started the metal covers with campaign number two. So mm -hmm. two, three, and four. It's built into the campaign. We didn't have one for issue number one, but there's an add-on on this campaign if you wanted to get metal for number one. I actually dropped the price on those. Yeah. Um, they were running for $100 on campaign two and three. They're $75 yeah. on this one for both four and 
I think all the metals, actually, you can add them on for 75 as opposed to 100. Yeah. But then we're laying those to rest. Um, we're doing the trade paperback. And then when we pick up with issue number five, we're going to do wooden covers. I that I can't tell you how excited I am about that. I, I love the wooden cover idea. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes perfect sense for this story because, again, we're done with the past. We're moving forward in the story. We're back with Jude St. Clair and Dwayne yeah. Fink. And things just go nuts. It's very much like Western apocalypse and that wooden grainy cover is just going to fit so nicely with the story. So I'll have to make sure like um, when Marco does his cover that it would lend to the, oh, the wooden cover, right? Because yeah. what he's doing right now, I don't know if you've noticed, is beautiful in the metals because it's so colorful yeah. um, and it just pops right off. It's so in, I don't know if you have any metal covers, but when they print them, the colors are kind of in the background and then they print it again with the black lines and the black lines are raised. So you can feel it. It's yeah. really neat. Yeah. With the wood ones, you almost want to have like a burnt look kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And some like, this. sorry, Siri, I'm not talking to you. Um, <laughs> and some kind of like relief for, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it like, um, what are those things called? Those big machines that they burn into wood. I forget what's it called. Something. Yeah. It's, um, gosh, dang it. Or, I know I'll cut around it. I know um, what you know. <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll think of it later. Like yeah. after we're done recording, it'll be like it'll be exactly hey! what we remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know etcher, laser etcher. It is a laser etcher, but there's yeah, like a, there's a the brand name that's popular. I forget. Yeah. All right, so Lori, where can people head if they want to get on this uh, path of the pale rider train? Oh, we got all sorts of all sorts of stuff. So yeah. if you want to take a look at the Kickstarter, we have a short link. It's really easy. It's pale hyphen rider dot com and that'll take you right to the kickstarter um i also um, if you keep scrolling it'll show you a recap of every issue um there's pictures of me and the team it has pictures of all the riddles and there's links to all the short films that'll you can watch it actually on the kickstarter page yeah. um when we're not running a campaign you can always go to the website it's www.pathofthepalewriter.com mm -hmm. um and that i'll have information i hate updating that website so it's maybe not always caught up <laughs> but if you like social media because who doesn't um we're on all the social medias but the the one that gets the most attention is the facebook group i have yes. a page which i use for advertising that's not it the group you have to answer one question to get in, which is, do you like comics? Um, but it just, it keeps the scammers out, right? Right, of course. If they don't answer the question, there's just delete. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we do polls in there. We have shenanigans. They get updated first before all the other socials. Um, Instagram and TikTok is at Path of the Pale Rider with an underscore between all those words. And I'm, I have regrets. <laughs> because it's so stinking long yeah sorry <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry um let's see on x i'm at path pale rider and on threads i'm at Lori calcaterra i have an instagram that's at Lori calcaterra as well you can you can find me just by uh, if you look up Lori calcaterra or path of the pale rider yeah. you will find me we're the only path of the pale rider out there we're gonna have links to all that in the description guys but i want to make sure you guys go to that facebook group it's super active and check yeah. out the TikTok. The TikTok's a lot of fun. That's that's that's. I that's post so part. much shenanigans there. Yeah, good. Gotta have <laughs> like when we it. smashed a pumpkin. No, we smashed a watermelon. That's one of our stretch goals every campaign. Um, yeah. it's called the slice and dice. So I pull the backers and the fans, and I let them decide what weapon of destruction I'm going to use. And then they got to name the watermelon this time. Oh, that's and they brutal. Named it, they named it King Joffrey Baratheon. Oh, good. Oh Actually, God, I'm for it. Hilarious, right? <laughs> oh, and I have a story about that. So, yeah. yeah so um, I have a show called The Tuesday Morning Brew every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, I dressed up as Pikachu. Why? <laughs> I don't know because it was fitting. And then I, I sliced the heck out of King Joffrey Baratheon. And yeah. then um, one of the fans had actually suggested a weapon outside of the pole, and it was a soup can in a sock. Okay. Like, yeah. up prison weapon. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> that had a great radius of destruction. So we did oh, that. Cool. And uh, now King Joffrey Baratheon is currently growing in my lawn. That's... <laughs> <laughs> House Lannister never dies. <laughs> it's, like, it's here for revenge. And I was like, yeah. should I be afraid? 
<laughs> yeah. You gotta be pretty determined to grow in the grass. <laughs> like seriously, nope. that's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, one of your stretch goals I want to make sure to shout out real quick too before we go is giant indie uh, PDF bundle. Yes. Can you tell me about this? Because I know Ray's, we've talked to a few of these comic book writers, but I mean, it's just such a great idea. I love this because everybody wins on this. Um, the backers win because they get an additional 15 other comics. Crazy. PDF, right? Yeah. So instant. So as soon as we finish our comic, and uh, it's gotten through editing. We we send out the PDF right at the same time we go to print. So mm -hmm. if people are really, you know, on the edge of their seat wanting to know what happens next. They could read that PDF. But along with our PDF, they get the other 15 comics. So you yeah. get to find all sorts of good stuff in there. There's all ages. There's horror. There's suspense. There's action, superhero. Yeah. It's just crazy. And um, people were coming out of the woodwork to volunteer their books. Someone was like, here's all 40 of my series. And I was like, no, 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 no. That's not how this works, dude. <laughs> we need a teaser. That's it. <laughs> One. <laughs> yeah, it's but um, <laughs> the backers win too, because the physical backers are usually the only ones that get those stretch goals. Mm -hmm. Now the the digital backers can get them too. Yeah. Um, I have international backers in Germany and Australia and kind of all over the place. Uh, and uh, they get this benefit as well. So everybody gets to participate, and then um, hopefully they find something new and follow some of these other indie creators who are so yes. wonderful and working very hard as well. Um, and I just get to have a blast getting all the new comics too. I'm like, I haven't read this one. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's some of them I haven't recognized yet. I'm like, okay, that's uh, well, what can I get this one? You know, so that's pretty cool. I'm loving, loving that. That's yeah, really I try to switch them around. I have a yeah. few that I keep on there all the time because they're my buddies. But yeah. like, um, what is it? The Nava Hearts is new. Dusk is new. Um, Slaughterville is new. I've already read it. I'm a backer on that one, but it's a great yeah. one. Um, and I'm glad that everybody else gets to read it too. A Mother's Whisper is super warped. Um, that was new oh, last really? time. And uh, if you like horror, this one will shake you a little bit. Um, Dragon Child is a great all ages. Um, what else? I there's haven't seen all, Ink before. All... Is Ink new? Ink was on new last campaign. Okay. That one's great. He's a superhero that has all these tattoos. Mm -hmm. I, I, you got to read it. <laughs> oh, I will be. I, I, the Na Nave of Heart caught my eye right away. So I'm like, okay, so that one for sure. I'm looking yeah. forward to it, guys. Man, guys, night... we got to hit those stretch goals. Start getting over there. I know. <laughs> right. So we hit that one pretty quickly because yes. that's like right after we fund, right? It's less yeah. than 500 bucks from where we fund. Yeah. Um. So the next one's... There's two of them that we could, it just depends on how the backers come in. Mm -hmm. So the next one for the poker cards is a hundred and we have 81 backers. So we're on our way to that one to getting another poker card. And then the next stretch goal will be 5,500. And what are we at? I think that's the koozies that I made. So it's oh, really cool. cool. There's black or white ones and they have like our iconic skull uh, with the X on the forehead. Yeah. Which is color. also on the new trucker hats. Right. Right. Which is on the trucker hats. Yeah. Um, everybody likes this hat that I wear and I just made it for myself and I wasn't really right. all that skilled at it. Like it needs some work, <laughs> but, um, I'm going to have, I'm gonna, they're going to be made professionally. So, but it'll be this pattern. Um, and that's what people wanted. I usually pull the backers and I say, okay, what are you looking for in this next campaign? Cause I switch stuff out, but yeah. I might need to do another batch of hot sauce, man. Um, I did that's 24 bottles. I only, I only got two left. Oh, yeah. Um, they actually sell more at comic book stores and at cons than they did on the Kickstarter. I think I had nine people back the hot sauce, but like everybody at the table is like, I want this. <laughs> it's just a fun idea. Yeah. Might as well. Something you didn't expect yeah. to pick up at the comic book shop, you know? So that's pretty cool. Right. Like yeah. Oh my gosh. This, I went to geek out in Burleson mm -hmm. and one of their employees bought a bottle and then they had lunch. So he opened it and they all had some. They're all like, excuse me. I was like, yeah. yeah. They're like, how much for the hot sauce? I'm like, <laughs> like, how many do you want? They're like, all of them. All right. Yeah. yeah. You, so now I only you have thought left. you were making comic books. You're actually opening up a hot sauce I'm company. <laughs> going to be in the hot sauce business from here yeah. on out. <laughs> All right, Lori. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show again, and I can't wait to talk to you for about this trade coming up. But uh, guys, make sure you head over to uh, all the links in the description and get yourself in on this campaign. Obviously, it's a fun community to be a part of, and I'm so happy about it. Thank you again.
Thank you again, Frank. Thanks for having me on. And again, your show is the best. I love it here. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye.